Good morning. Thursday. Almost the end of the week. Get to wear real clothes tomorrow. It's always nice. Ah, today's topic. Dealing with in-character issues and when to do it in character, when to do it out of character. I primarily want to focus today on dealing with in character issues in character because I do believe that when at all possible it is best for the group cohesion to try to assume that if there's a problem going on that problem is an in-character problem, not a player problem. But you want that to be your first step. You want to go to that first. Well, you as a player are fine, but this character is annoying. Or this character is problematic. Um, you want to start with the character rather than starting with the player. Now, if you have a player who you have noticed over the course of multiple characters is still creating the same issues, then it's the player. And that's when you have to deal with the player, not the character. But don't start there. Start with the character. Um, and I also want to mention today the broader issue of dealing with in-character um, or even dealing with out-of-character group issues in character. Um, because that can be a real issue as well. And because of that, I'm going to actually tell about a game that I ran well over a decade ago. Um, and it... It is a game that shocked my players and confused my players um, until they finally realized why I did what I did. Basically, for a while, I had a group of players who had not had a DM like me before. I'll put it that way to start. They were used to a situation where a DM would balance encounters against the group all the time. Now, what I mean by this is, they were used to everything they fought being their challenge rating. Because that's how combat works, right? You work out the ch challenge rating of the group, you put in that challenge rating of monsters, and you, you have a fight. That's not how the world works. And I needed a way to prove that to my players. Because they kept just mindlessly charging in without thinking about things, without considering things. Oh, look, combat. Let's go. So, we started a campaign. I put them at third level. That's where I used to normally start. Uh, it's changed about a bit through the years, but um, for the longest time, I used to start at about third level. You're a little bit beyond first, but you're not too high yet. Um, so yeah, I started them at third level, they left the town on their way towards, um, a small village that they had heard was having trouble with orcs. Fairly typical start. As they're walking down the road, I called for perception checks. Um, and three of them passed the check. 
wasn't a difficult check, but they passed it. And they saw flying overhead a red dragon. Uh, none of them got particularly high on the checks, so they didn't get a great look at it. But they got enough to tell it's a red dragon. And not only did it fly overhead, but it flew overhead and then landed in the forest about a mile away. Now this is the point where they group where the group should have thought, we're third level, that's a dragon. That thought should have passed through their minds. Instead, and, and I found this out from speaking to them later, what passed through their mind was, oh look, random encounter, he must have scaled a dragon down in level for us. Because that's the thinking that group had. Oh, it must be a wormling. It must be a Challenger 3 dragon so that we can get some nice, cool dragon loot. That was their thinking. So, they headed towards where they saw the dragon land. As they approached the clearing, I gave them all of the signs. I told them that this dragon sounds very big. That its deep breathing seems to fill the area around them. That they felt heat radiating from the clearing. What they should have thought was, that doesn't sound like a wormling. Instead, what they thought was, Oh, cool, let's fight a dragon. And so, they charged into the clearing. A group of five third-level adventurers. And directly into the fire breath of a ancient red dragon. I think it was CR 24, 25, uh, this was third edition, so uh, it was one of the really big, nasty dragons. Um, and it looked at them and breathed on them, and every one of them died. And the room just kind of went silent, and then they kind of looked at me and says, I don't... I don't understand. What? I said, you're dead. You just charged a dragon and it burned you to death. And I kind of looked around and said, but all of us? Yeah. You were all within 10 feet of each other and got caught by its cone breath, by, by its cone of flames. It burned all of you to death. Okay, but can we... No. You're dead. Give me your character sheets. And that gaming session lasted all of 40 minutes from character creation to death. Because I could not think of another way to get across to them that not everything in the world is your challenge rating. Not everything in the world is scaled for you have a fair fight. Uh, I talked a lot yesterday about what's fair and what isn't fair. And that's always going to remember is that you can treat it like a game. Excuse me. You can treat D&D &D like a game. 
and in a lot of ways D&D is a game, but your characters in the game have to realize that it's not a game. For them, it's the world. It is how things are. And the world is not always fair. So, yeah, that was a case, a quite extreme case, of dealing with an out-of-character issue. The group had certain assumptions about the game which were not true. And dealing with it in character, killing their group by Red Dragon. And it's, a, it's an example of how you use the game to get across an image of something which is hard to describe in a sentence. If I had just said to them, not everything in the world is your challenge rating, they would have kind of chuckled and said, oh yeah, no, 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 we know, we know, we know. And gone on still assuming that, okay, yeah, not everything's our challenge rating, just the stuff that we're going to run into. Or, oh yeah, not everything's our challenge rating, it might be one or two above. But no, I had to get across the point to them that, that there were things in the world much bigger and much meaner than they were. By the same token, there are times when I might have my group run into something and then have them be completely overpowered for it. It it, it sometimes becomes funny in a game because you've got a group that's traveling down the road in a wagon. Looks like a quite nice wagon. And bandits attack. And the group kind of looks at it and goes, Oh great, an encounter! And then the wizard goes, I'm going to cast Fireball on those two over there to soften them up a bit. And he casts Fireball and they both just disintegrate. They just burn to ash. And he's thinking, wait, what just happened? And it turns out that this was a group of level 2 thieves going up against level 15 characters because the thieves had no idea who they were robbing and that moment of wait a second are they just and the players all kind of look at each other and chuckle because they realize that these guys are just way, way over their heads but it gives the world realism So does yawning, I suppose. Um, So yeah, anytime that you can deal with an issue through an in-character event, through demonstrating something in the game, uh, I also like to use devils for this. If I have a character who is um, trying to kind of rules lawyer events, I'll often introduce devils to the game to outlawyer them. Uh, especially in my Spelljammer game, uh, devils are the undisputed master of contracts. Uh, even the arcane who pride themselves on contracts. Uh, the arcane, the most powerful of arcane, if they really want something done right, they hire a devil lawyer. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's a big part of it. Now, the other side of it, though, is dealing with with issues out of character, which is a lot more tricky. Dealing with a problem player. And the primary thing there is, you need to understand what's causing it, i.e., is the player looking for more attention? Is the player thinking that they're being helpful, but just not being? Uh, is the player just basically trolling the game? Because 
Sorry, you do get those from time to time. Um, find, figure out the player's motivation, if you can, before confronting them, because it will inform your decisions. Uh, then at some point you have to confront them, you have to discuss things with them um, as, as openly as possible, you know, be brutally honest, and then you have to deal with it as you would any real-life situation. You have to uh, try to be empathetic, try not to let your own personal frustrations get into things. I fail at that mostly uh, all the time. Um, and just talk it through, and hopefully they'll be able to fix it. If not, it might not be the right group for them. Uh, and I've said that before, and it's unfortunate, but sometimes it's true. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up there today. Tomorrow will be Friday. Uh, with any luck, it will be less rainy tomorrow than it is today. Um, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Have a great day, and uh, talk to you later.